in the previous video you saw that if we have a solenoid uh, let me just draw a solenoid here and i'll just draw the coils spaced out means they're uh, separate just to make things more clear right so that is our solenoid here and the solenoid is obviously connected to some battery to power it to send some current through it so yeah i hope you can see that now in the previous video you see that if we have a solenoid through which some current is uh, passing through you get a magnetic field that goes in uh, straight through the solenoid and then diverges outwards goes around the solenoid and comes back through in the other end so the basic idea here is that the magnetic field inside the solenoid is generally parallel the magnetic field lines inside the solenoid, uh, solenoid are generally parallel parallel to each other and as they exit of the out of the solenoid they diverge they spread out and they go around solenoid and come back in through the other end so that is the basic idea here now in this video let us have a look at how we can figure out the, mag the magnitude of the magnetic field so what for that we'll use the uh, uh, we'll use ampere's law that you've seen in the previous videos what it is let's apply the ampere let's apply ampere's uh, law uh, in this case of a solenoid so to <coughs> make things easier i'll just remove this wire and battery just to uh, make things more clear there is some current passing through the through the coil i just want to draw the battery now what i can do is i can take the solenoid is it, this is like a spring right so i can just take the solenoid and cut it like this uh, in half and remove the top section so if i remove the top top section what am i left with i'll be left with only the lower part of the rings right i'll be left with only these curves if you i'm removing the top part so i will be left with only the lower section of the loop which is this much i hope you can imagine that part so this is the lower part of all the loops yeah there you go let's clean it up quickly yeah so there you go <coughs> yeah so i have i'm 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 left with only the lower part of the all the loops because i've cut the solenoid in, in this way and remove the top section why am i doing this well this is just to make just to make our uh, so that i can we can apply the we can apply ampere's law and make the calculations a bit more easy now let me take an ampere amperian loop uh, which is just a loop that i use that will be that will use to calculate uh, that will that will use to apply ampere's law so let me take a rectangular amperian loop let's say of this shape right so now uh, this is my amperian loop and let me just write the names here a b c d for all the corners now let me apply my ampere's uh, rule uh, ampere's law which simply states that i'll use a red uh, that states that the integral of the closed integral of b dot dl equals mu naught i where i is the current passing through the surface enclosed by the loop right or rather in simple terms the current through the loop going through the loop through the surface that is inside the loop right now in this case uh, so this what does this expression mean b dot dl this simply means the net magnetic field along the if we add up along the whole loop so uh, dl is the small section of the loop if we integrate it along the loop which means if we add the magnetic field along the total complete loop this is the expression that we should get right which is equal to this expression here so how much is the sorry for that so how much is the um uh, so yeah how much is the ma total magnetic field along the whole loop well if you see the magnetic field inside the um, solenoid are parallel to, parallel to each other and let's say for example if there are 10 magnetic field lines going through the loop going through the solenoid then all those 10 magnetic field lines would um, spread out of out of this point out of the exit of the uh, solenoid and then they, they will travel back through um, 
outside the solenoid back into the other end so if you see there are 10 magnetic field lines inside the solenoid in only this much amount of space and if you see outside the solenoid we still have those 10 magnetic field lines but now they're spread out over such a large volume right they can travel from here to anywhere there so those 10 magnetic field lines have the whole this the whole volume around the solenoid to travel back to the other end so that simply means that the uh, magnetic field lines are more spread out outside the solenoid as compared to inside the solenoid and it turns out we can assume that the magnetic field inside the solenoid is much 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 more stronger than the magnetic field outside the solenoid and so we can um, we can neglect the magnetic field outside the solenoid for now and only consider the consider the magnetic field inside the solenoid so we say that the magnetic field line magnetic field along ab which is outside the solenoid outside the solenoid is simply zero so the magnetic field along this is zero now what is the magnetic field along bc well the magnetic field field along bc and ad is also zero because there is no magnetic field line traveling in that direction along ab or ad or uh, cb right there is no such magnetic field line because all the magnetic fields lines are either par going through the solenoid parallel to each other or coming back from outside the solenoid in that direction so there is no such field line which is parallel to AD or BC and therefore the magnetic field along AD and BC is also zero. So what is left now? We have we are left with only DC. So that so the all the magnetic field along the whole loop is only along DC, right? So let us figure out the magnetic field uh, along DC now i know that because the magnetic field lines inside the solenoid are parallel to each other that means the magnetic field is uniform which means it's constant from this point to that point so if it's constant i can simply take my b out of the integral and write it simply as a b and the integration of dl becomes the length of the section we are considering in this case it is simply dc so the integral of dl would simply become the length of dc let's say the length of this d c uh, section of wire this section of wire is h so you can see that this part becomes b times h right uh, b times h perfect now what is the current passing through the, through the loop we can see that because the so i have i have just cut the section in uh, cut the solenoid half just so that we can visualize it better so here the loops are going in this manner right so when we reach here the loop goes through the surface and it goes from under the surface and comes up from here again it goes through the surface comes up from here goes through the surface comes up from there and this is how the solenoid is wrapped around this amperian loop so we can see that at this point the uh, current is going into to the loop even at this point it is going into the loop even at this point it is going into the loop even here even here and here it is coming out uh, up out of the table even here it is coming out of the table out 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 right so we use a dot to represent something coming out of the table and let me just represent a cross to represent something going into the table and we can see that if we, we have to consider the current going through the surface enclosed by the loop so we'll only consider these points at which the current is going into the table so here all the current is going in one direction which is into the table so we'll consider all of them let's say positive uh, right then there's no current coming out of the table inside the loop right so we'll consider only these points now how many wires would be there inside the length of the loop let's say n is the number of um, number of coils per unit length which means n is the number of coils let's say per meter or per any unit right so if, if n is the number of coils per unit length how many how many loops would be in this length which is h well it would simply be n times h right now n is the number of number of loops per unit length times the length would give you the number of loops in that particular length which is h so i would have simply n times n times let me write it clearly I, will, I would have n times h number of loops inside this given section so what is the net amount of current going through the loop well it would be the number of loops inside this section times the current in each of them and the current in each of them is simply i right because they are connected in, connected in series this is just one single wire so the current through all of them is simply i 
and so the current total current going through the loop would be simply number of loops n h so let me remove this number of loops n h times the current through each loop i so this is the total current going through the uh, amperian loop and that is n times h times i and you can see that we have h on both sides so i can cancel that out and now if i write it uh, yeah i get b equals mu naught i times n right i just rearrange the terms i get this b equals mu naught i mu naught i times n and this is the expression that we have for a solenoid for the magnetic field inside a solenoid because only the magnetic field inside the solenoid is inside the solenoid is considerably high as compared to the magnetic field outside the magnetic field outside the solenoid is there but it is much more weak as compared to the to the magnetic field inside the solenoid and it is given by b equals mu naught i times n so we can see that the magnetic field of a solenoid depends on the current through the solenoid and how tightly wrapped it is the number of coils we have in a given length per unit length so yeah that is how you can find the magnetic field of uh, a solenoid and that is it for this video